you visiting with Nina Dockery. She's our enzyme expert. First of all, Nina, what is gluten? Well, gluten is a, a storage protein. Um, actually, really a, a glycoprotein. It has a, a sugar attached to a protein, and it's more correctly called a prolamine. And this is found in, this is a protein that is found in grains, and particularly in wheat, barley, and rye, and perhaps even oats. Um, and it is a protein that seems to cause problems for people at an increasing rate in the last few years. We're hearing a lot more about it anyway. It's much more prevalent, isn't it? It is much more prevalent. And the problem is we have several different degrees of what people perceive as their degree of difficulty with it. There are people who are simply gluten sensitive. In other words, when they eat certain um, foods, particularly wheat, mm -hmm. um, products with wheat in them, they get stomach upset or, or a little diarrhea or something like gas. that. Gas, maybe. And then there are people who have a true gluten intolerance and it seems that no matter what type of wheat product they eat, they're going to have a more severe condition. You know, they just don't feel well, and it could occur fairly rapidly after eating a wheat product. And then there are people who are truly allergic to wheat, um, and that's a totally different situation. So we're talking about sensitivity, intolerance, right. and being allergic. And being allergic to wheat. And that means they simply, they have an allergic response. Their immune system sets up a response to the presence of wheat in their system of any kind. And it's generally not the gluten portion. It is generally a different protein in the wheat. Actually, oh, really? it's a different protein in the wheat altogether that causes a wheat allergy than what causes a gluten sensitivity. It's really not the gluten itself. It's usually the albumin or another um, prominent wheat protein. And then we go to the next stage, which is celiac disease or, or um, gluten enteropathy. And that's where you have a, a severe response it gets into an immune response. It's not a, a, a really an allergic response, but it is an immune, a severe immune response to the presence of gluten in the system. And this is generally a genetic disorder. It is inherited. This sounds pretty alarming. It is. It is, it is probably the most severe. Um, I, there are people who have a very strong allergic response to wheat, but other than that, people who have celiac disease has have a very strong response to the presence of wheat. Well, someone who's sensitive or intolerant, they s simply can avoid products like wheat and barley and oats and mm -hmm. rye, those kind of products. And wheat's pretty pervasive in our society. Yes, it is. And it's in places, particularly gluten, is in places where we would not suspect it to be because it is it's used as a as a more or less as a processing yes. agent in a lot of our processed foods and so when we're talking about um, people who are who have celiac disease for instance or who are allergic to to wheat they avoid wheat products altogether mm -hmm. they they live a uh, for people with celiac disease a gluten-free diet and so they have to look for foods that they know are completely devoid of gluten of any sort. Okay. Um, and, and normally what we're thinking or what we're speaking of is usually from wheat. That is the most common one. And that particular gluten is called gliadin. So many times you will see a reference to gliadin sensitivity. That is mm -hmm. the, the gluten that is in wheat. Um, there are other glutens that are in barley and rye. Um, triticale or in oats that have different names. All of them are kind of grouped under this gluten okay. um, umbrella. umbrella. Okay. Um, but they're all just a little bit different. Normally what we're, we're looking at is the gliadin or the wheat fraction of that. Um, but yes, and so what, we, what people tend to do is to avoid wheat products or anything containing gluten altogether, which could also include barley and rye as well, and sometimes even oats. That's very difficult to do in our society. So there is an enzyme that we can take, right, that will help with uh, that? Yes, for those people who have a, a sensitivity or a mild intolerance, there are. There are a lot of enzymes um, recently being studied. 
to help to help particularly with celiac disease because it is such a severe condition. But if we if we take that one out and, and look at um, at least controlling sensitivities and intolerances, there are a lot of enzymes that are being um, studied at this point. One of those being an enzyme called DPP4 or dipeptidyl peptidase, which is an enzyme that is um, normally found in the intestinal wall. So it is an enzyme that is in our bodies to okay. begin with. And it functions along with another enzyme called um, DCP1, which is a dipeptidyl carboxypeptidase that are in the intestinal wall, and those break down the gluten um, that we consume on an ordinary basis. Mm -hmm. Now they are in the intestinal wall, and sometimes they do not function quick enough to avoid a sensitivity or an intolerance oh, response. Okay. That's why we are helped by supplementing the DPP-4 into our system where it has the capability of working much earlier in the digestive process. Well, that's really good news for people who are sensitive to wheat. Yes. Or intolerant, as you say, or allergic. Right. Thank you very much, Nina. Thank you.